talk about pet peeves that you have for movies, I have one myself, and that is the intrusive documentarian. The documentarian who wants to be a part of his own film. So this is a documentary about X. Yeah, but I'm the one who's pursuing. I'm the person that it's all about. Podcasts do this all the time, but that seems to be the nature of podcasts. Well, Werner Herzog does this all the time. Werner Herzog does it, and so does Michael Moore, but I forgive them because they have come in with personalities. Because they are like William Castle and Alfred Hitchcock and Spike Lee, where their personalities are part of the show. If I'm watching a movie about a person interesting enough to make a documentary about them, whoever it is making it, I don't care about them. And this is what they always do. Before I finished my project, there was just one more thing I had to do. They always have that line in it. It's just horrible because it makes it sound as though they're the heroes, not the person that they're making the movie about. Can you give me an example of a feature film documentary that does this? Winnebago Man. Okay. Uh, that guy needed to do one more thing. <laughs> unboxing, Craig. It is! It is unboxing again! This is a special show we've created just for our donors where we honor them by saying their names and we open up our mail, things that they send to us. Yes. Here are some of those donors. Katie, who says, After years of watching the show and seeing that bat flying around poor Mr. Milland... <laughs> I finally watched The Lost Weekend, and it was a trip. Love to everyone in the basement. My lips are under here somewhere. Scott, Samuel, Brandon, The Factory Boys, Maurizio, Wilson, Malcolm, Benjamin, Kevin, William, Michael, Dan, Alexander, Wayne, David, Christine, Mara, John, Ferris, Stephanie, Mar Marie, Mario, Michael, Jennifer, Ashton, Zach, Tiffany, Mitchell, James, and Nathan. Thank you for donating, all you guys. The rest of our donors later in the show. For doning. Thank you for doning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for doning. <clears throat> I had some drinks and now I'm drunk. This is a postcard of a cartoony town. It's from Nate and Luke. My eight-year-old son asked me to watch Jaws with him one day. Why, he asked you to watch Jaws? Oh. That's a cool kid. Yeah. I was eager but cautious. We watched it together and my son loved it. Hooper is his favorite character. Hooper's everyone's favorite character. Yeah, he's, he's pretty awesome. Well, Quinn. Quinn. I went into the cinema immersion tank with McCabe and Mrs. Miller. What Ooh. a wild ride. That's a good choice. Good choice. Great choice. If either of you have seen it. Yes, we've both seen it. I think we talked about it on the show. Yeah, one of my top two Altmans, maybe? This postcard is from Hunt Stanton. A big thank you to all at Welcome to the Basement for keeping this going during lockdown. During lockdown, I made sourdough bread and I started to play the bugle. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Did any of you learn new skills? I always cook, but we have a CSA, so I've been really hustling to keep up with that, coming up with new recipes. I've been pickling a lot of things. I've also been pickling. And I also made sauerkraut for the first time. I made bread and butter pickles, carrots, and also um, onions, doing red onions, which are great on Mexican oh, food. Oh, those are awesome. I, yes. I, I used to make those all the time. And, uh, like... and also, I, I did a lot of reading. Lockdown hit right when I had a kid, and somehow I read a lot, too. I read Moby Dick. Cheers and many thanks from Matt, Jojo, Big Bird, and the Mini Moo. Jojo. And then we have a postcard here from T.A. Epley and to T.A. Epley. What? Hi, Thomas. Thank you so much for your order of the Dawn Flame Glass Sculpture. Your custom is appreciated. Have a lovely day. This postcard was sent to T.A. Epley after he ordered a glass sculpture. And the address line was blank, so he decided to send it to us. Second hand <laughs> from buying a bauble. I was so confused when I saw this. because I thought that you bought a glass sculpture, which would be an insane thing to do at this point in your life. <laughs> And I thought the person you bought it from knew that you did this show and they sent you your thank you postcard to our P.O. box. I was very confused. And then I saw the note from T.A. So, there you go. Three for three. This question is from Kyle Ford. It's not really a question. Matt, I know you're a fan of music biopics and I think Harry Nilsson's story is perfect for the medium. Abandoned by his father, moving around constantly as a boy, rising to fame and an insecurity that led to drug addiction and overpowered his incredible talent. Each chapter of his life can be transformed to the big screen without having to move... Too many events around for dramatic effect. Don't forget his career as a banker. Kyle, I think you should start writing that screenplay. Uh, I think it is a, a great story to tell. This is the saddest thing about Harry Nilsson's life. There's a long list that could be the saddest thing of Harry Nilsson's life. Well, when he was a young boy, his family was abandoned by his father. He writes about this 
more than once in the song 1941 and in Daddy's song. And in both of these songs, he says, someday I'm going to have a son and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And he did. Like he left. When his son was was a young boy, he divorced the mother and and left. No. Yeah. You find this out. There's a Harry Nilsson documentary called Who's Harry Nilsson? It's very good. This is a question from Spencer Riley. What movies are you most excited to share with your kids? There are movies I want to show them that are appropriate for him now, but for some reason he doesn't want to watch yet. I want to show him How to Train Your Dragon, which is a delightful cartoon, but he started watching it and he didn't like one of the characters and now he's like, I don't want to watch it. So I just want to get him past that barrier so that he can see a guy train a dragon so he knows how in case it comes up. Got some packages to open. I have one from Norway. My apologies for not knowing how to pronounce my great-grandfather's language. Sindra from Bergen. This is from Mitchell Rudiman. I figured it was about time I sent this. I discovered this film when I was working at a coffee shop, and a regular gifted me a copy he'd gotten at a B-movie convention. It is Mitchell! (laughs) Wielding a harpoon. Does he do that? I don't remember that scene. I also don't remember that horrendous jacket. We have a graphic novel of some sort. Anubis, Dog of Death. Oh, yeah. We're in this. We're sitting, we're like sitting at a cafe or something. Oh, really? This is the first one. Anubis gets adopted. Congratulations. This looks great. Thank you. I want to smell it. We are often sent records in our P.O. box. I think I see some right here that we're going to unbox later in the show. But when I get them, I listen to them. And so I listen to, of Montreal... This one. Darn it, why don't they print... Of Mon- of Montreal, The Bedside Dream, A Petite Tragedy. This is weird. <laughs> it's like children's music for weird children. His name is Kevin Barnes, I believe. Kevin Barnes. It's like he reinvents his entire thing with every album. It's crazy. I don't think I have much more to say about it. It's just, <laughs> it's unlike anything you're gonna, you're gonna hear... He's got a song called, like, I love my sweetie pie or I love my honey pie or something like that. It's weird. (laughs) But I'm glad I heard it. How about jokes we didn't use from the episode? How about them? Jumps right in, doesn't it? Are we we filming? (laughs) Paul Van Meer, high-ranking official in the colonial office, was stepped to death. Maybe Van Meer was killed by a girl with a pearl earring? Or a woman with a ewer? It seems there's been a lot of violence around there lately. Well, don't pretend to be a fool. But look, Billy. I am not pretending. Line? Are your friends sailing to? The whole kit and caboodle. And the caboodle? You don't just want the kit. you got to have the caboodle. Oh, uh, Mr. Chelm, I, I want you to meet a friend of mine. He's a human weasel. Dan, rather. Yeah, he's no Cronkite. I quite like him. I wonder what's his frequency, Kenneth. Judge Moore was a very distinguished English writer, you know. Except that he was Irish. This is like Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, but mumbled. <laughs> Rub-a-dub-dub, three men in a tub. Eating their curds and whey. <laughs> I'm talking about the untimely Demise of Paul Van Meer. Demise? Demise? A little risky, huh? Uh, very weak, please. Why did Peter Lorre never play Mr. Toad? <laughs> he would be perfect for it. I feel to you like, uh, like an older brother. Well, oh, it's not so much the difference of age, it's, uh... I give you noogies and wedgies. Hey, we have more donors to read. Right here. Mora, Andrea, Philip, Robert, Amber, Melanie, Grant, Greg, and a goods and services. Abigail Cole, Elizabeth Crafty Fandom, Graham, Emily, Ralph, Adam, Mary Beth Shelby, Mike Shannon, Kempson, Gail, Ann, Eric, Alfred, Bernard, Andrew, JP, Justine, RPC Services, Reed, Patrick, and Jed. Thank you. I'll bet he doesn't like it when people call him Mike. <laughs> you know, there's Mike's and there's Michaels. Yeah. I used to live with someone named Mike Crawford. You wouldn't call him Michael Crawford. And yet the original fan of the opera, Michael Crawford, you would never call him Mike Crawford. People wouldn't call you Matthew. No, I don't like that at all. Yeah. We've got two more packages to open. Yes, we do. I want the big one. This is from Aaron in Hell's Kitchen. He says, how dare you turtlenecks rule. There's Carl Sagan defending himself. 
It's a good Carl Sagan. And this is from Rachel in Reseda, California. You are going to Reseda to date a model you don't know. This is an album, Distraction Sickness by Dark Rooms. And here I've checked, I've cross-checked it. It says Dark Rooms up here with Rachel Ballard. This is actually Rachel Ballard's band. All right. Along with Daniel Hart, Bobak Lotfipur, and Casey Trella. Huh. So there we go. Dark rooms. Here's an envelope for me. I think that Aaron in Hell's Kitchen made his fortune in tape. <laughs> Matt, you may have reached a saturation point with letter openers, but I thought you'd enjoy <laughs> this one. That's kind of ironic how hard it is to open that up. That's pretty cool. Oh, it's your number one letter opener. Yeah, number one. Yeah, but it looks like a sword. The tape. The <laughs> tape. It's it's inside the box already. You don't need to tape it down. Okay, I imagine you are to read this first. I'm going to use this. Oh, wait, look at that. He didn't seal the envelope. <laughs> Craig, I thought you would enjoy this, especially after seeing the candy in the lower left-hand corner. P.S. The red and blue Clark bar in the middle is a local Pittsburgh favorite. We've got a 1,000-piece candy wrappers Ooh. puzzle. Here's the Clark bar, and let's see. <gasps> the elusive marathon bar. My favorite from my childhood, which is basically a curly whirly, which is right above it, curly whirly. Thank you. Uh, I know another uh, rainy day hobby of yours is doing puzzles, so I, I think you'll enjoy this one. Yes, I do like that. Bosco milk chocolate, Pop Rocks, Bazooka Joe gum. Does Lorenzo help you with puzzles? Oh, no, 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 no. no. You know what I like about puzzles like this? This is basically a hundred little puzzles. It's like you, you do the Pop Rock puzzle, and then you do the Bosco puzzle, and you just assemb slowly assemble the entire thing. Sure. All that remains for us is to recommend an episode from our vast back catalog for you to watch or rewatch. Hey, we recently had our 200th episode. You want to see what we looked like half a show ago? Go back to our 100th episode, which is Akira Kurosawa's Dreams. It's an entirely unique movie by the Japanese master, and uh, it's... Basically, eight short films, which are based on his dreams. There is a button at the end of this video you can click on to watch our Akira Kurosawa's Dreams episode, and now you can watch this. Do it. Send us packing by the first available boat or train. We shan't object. We've got important business elsewhere. Where is elsewhere? Central Africa. And what sort of a business? You know, raping your continent for your minerals, typical colonial stuff. 